we are back at the infamous bow rack guys this is where i go to have all my stuff done they're located in springfield oregon is this eugene or springfield 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 yeah springfield oregon they probably one of the leading bow shops probably in the country i would say pro shops uh wayne knows his stuff hires great employees guys that stay here forever and uh anyway we are going to set up my white bow today come on in Are some sheds I found the other day. Bad. Pretty good mass. Normally I wouldn't shoot it because of the flare, but it is what it is. That's a black tail I killed last year. Last day of season, you gotta pull that trigger. <laughs> no, there is some amazing taxidermy. Awesome taxidermy in here. A lot of these bulls, Wayne, you killed? All of them? No, no, no I wish. I killed most of them. Uh, the wall of black tails over there, that's all me. Started with the Hamsky rest. Come on over here, Wayne, if you'll explain. Yeah, we we got we got the Hamsky Trinity on here, and and we're gonna set center shot on it, and we're gonna set our our, our height, and uh, we're getting close. So this is a bungee and it's new with with hamski and what it does is it takes all the noise out of the cord because believe it or not if you've if you've got a hamski and you've got a spring set up and you don't have some kind of dampener on this it'll make noise i mean you can physically hear it when that thing comes down it'll make noise this takes all the noise out of it and then also it acts is the same position as the spring does so this is a new item and so it's it's an aftermarket that you can buy they're like forty-five dollars, and you can redo your cord system, and and you can you can do this instead. So you know a lot better setup, takes the noise out of it. Of course, you don't have a spring that can stretch out. You know, like I, I was just showing Trent that you can actually you know if you hook brush or whatever you're walking along, you hook brush, you can actually stretch these springs out because of course that's not the way it was, and it can even stretch out worse than that with not much. You know, hook it, pull on your bow, and boom, there you go. And your rest is standing straight up. You got a big bull or buck standing in front of you, and you got issues. So, so that's more that for, eliminates that. Then that's more for like competition kind of side of things. That well, you're not going to be in the brush. This or, this or is East Coast. Stuff. This is going to work well. You know, just replacement of the spring. It's right. going to do the same thing. Right. You know, but it's it's going to it's got just a lot of other benefits. And then the way they've done this collar is pretty unique too because the collar just has a saddle here that the that the, the cord just you know saddles that and there's no positive lock on this it's just and these cord clamps you know and i i'm, I'm not a big fan of plastic and you know that kind of thing but these cord clamps these are tough are they oh my gosh we've done you know literally thousands of these cord clamps and we've never seen one one fail or two break awesome. you know so you know, failure as far as slipping, you know, or just, you know, just one that's going to break. You know, we've never seen that. So, so you like you know, these pretty, pretty, pretty reliable. You know, so Hamsky is a company like Spot Hog. You know, they, they engineer everything last lifetime. You know, and nothing, you know, in my opinion, they're, we just don't see failure with them at all. Cool. You know, so that's, that's what the advantage is with, you know, companies that really have a lot of integrity as far as you know structural integrity built into their engineering do a couple double checks here so you got a string level which 
string and bow level are important. So, like, four foot. Yeah. You gotta love these vices, they're just pretty trick. And you always double check it. This is, the forefoot's a little bit more accurate than the string level, so it'll get your fine adjustment done. Get your first axis and, and your third axis on this side, so. Anybody can screw an Allen wrench in to put a rest on. Getting the rest true is a whole different story. Anybody can make a D loop. But the reason that I come to the boat rack every single year is because all the second, third axis stuff, as far as getting everything balanced, and then we'll go and we'll shoot through paper, getting everything tuned just right to where I don't have to mess with the bow and I can just shoot the bow. And I think a lot of people at home, when you're trying to do this by yourself, I mean, like Wayne has all these different levels and they put a four foot level on the side and then he'll do some more stuff with the cams, with the leaning of the cams and stuff. A lot of people don't have that stuff at home. And that's where a pro shop makes all the difference in the world because you can mark the, like I, Wayne, every single year, he'll mark my cams and with a, with a magic marker, like a white marker on the black cam. And I can right off the bat like if i have an issue with shooting or something like that i can look at those marks see if things are out of whack stuff like that it's just the little details that a pro shop especially like the bow rack but a pro shop can get you over just trying to just you know backyard do it yourself so that's why we come here and before opening hours so we get we get <laughs> vip treatment <laughs> So now see here, if you, I don't know if you can see the level, but that is really buried up. So if I level, this, I tell me, this is telling me what Bo's level, but you see where the level's at right here? That level is buried to the right. Oh yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna bring that back. So obviously it's buried up this way, so that sight has to come this way. You know, so we're just gonna loosen this here. And these react pretty quick. I mean, it doesn't take a lot. So I just like, that's, that's like an eighth of a. It's not much. It's not much. But enough at a downhill 45 oh, well, yard shot. It's, it's well, funny. see, this is all, this comes all the way out like this. And then this is turning. So it turns it pretty quick. So I just made a little adjustment there. And there's two different modules and they, they, they uh, so it's one cam, which is awesome. You know, one cam and two different modules. So you've got, you've got the module that, uh, your module goes up to 29 half. I believe this module will go to 29 half. Oh, okay. And uh, then the other one, will, you know, the other silver mod will go out to 32. Gotcha. Platforms as far as they, they've ever designed. I mean, it's quiet. That's right. It's, I don't, I it's, it's super smooth. smooth. Yeah. You know, it's got great performance. Um, so the performance is is definitely in, improved. You know, but it's and it's easy to tune. They've got a top hat system. You know, you just change the, the spacers. Mm -hmm. You know, now we still gotta still gotta jump in with the uh, with the C clips and everything. But you know, we we'll, just pretty much. Uh, we pretty much change it just by changing those top hats. So yeah, we're a little bit open on the top. Right. 
Put about a full turn in that one. We'll see if that brings us around. So I'm setting a, I'm setting the wheel timing. I just, uh, we were a little bit open on, on the top. And so that means, you know, being open on the top, you know, we're, we're closed on the bottom. So to bring this cam around, you just got to put a couple twists in it and then double check it. And so we're just, there's a set of string stops on this cam. So you have a top stop here, which is kind of cool too, because like if you go to Idaho, you got 80% let off. You can put those right on 80%, you know, so it's not like you're even changing anything, but just a draw stop. So, so here, you know, and I'm, I'm blind and need a little light. So here, see, you know, and so if we creep it just a little bit, see they're identical right there. So mm -hmm. they're creeping off of there at the same rate and they contact at the same rate. So that's gonna give you two things. One, it's gonna give you better, better tuning because they're both in total sync. And then when you draw back, that wall is gonna be, it's not gonna go boom, boom. It's gonna come back and it's gonna be solid. So, you know, ultimate, you know, accuracy is gonna be a lot better with that because even though it's a binary cam system, it's it's gonna it's gonna give us a lot better aero flight. Wheel timing is always super important. Yeah, that's what I couldn't. I can't do that at home. Marks on your cam as long as they move together. But if one moves and the other one doesn't, then you need to reset your wheel timing. I gotcha. So that's that's where that's where wheel timing you know marks you know work really well. Is it's gonna let you know if both cams are in sync or if one's just a little bit out of sync. And you know, all that, you know, two things. One, accuracy and penetration. Because if the arrow's not flying correctly, like if you got terrible arrow flight, when it hits the animal, it amplifies. You know, if that, mm -hmm. you know, if that arrow's coming out, you know, it's, 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 it's doing this. When it hits, it amplifies it. Yeah. You know, so kind of like a drinking straw. You can take a drinking straw and probably shove it at your hand any direction. It'll just crumple, right? But if you take that drinking straw and you just very, very, perfectly shove that down it can it'll cut you it'll go into you right. well arrows the same way you get a hundred percent of your kinetic energy all your momentum perfectly behind the whole arrow if it's if you got perfect arrow flight right. so that's always the goal you know and then too you know we were a fixed blade state up until three years ago and with fixed blades i mean if you don't have good arrow flight of course that broadhead's going to take a direction but you know good arrow flight's going to give you you know pinpoint accuracy with broadheads as well you know so bare shaft tuning you know, you know, good paper holes with, you know, flex shafts, you know, that's going to help that fixed blade broadhead fly a lot better. So, release. I didn't bring one. Didn't bring one. <laughs> it just so happens I got a couple. I figured you had a few. <laughs> okay. I don't know about beaming anybody up, but. Yeah. Just a little and then it's smooth. Oh yeah, that that super smooth. smooth. So, bow. so here we're just a little bit to the left, and we're gonna just try it one more time. Okay. And uh, make sure my arrow's solid here. Yeah, that's a good arrow. We'll just try it one more time. If it repeats it, we're gonna we're gonna go bump a top move hat. A, move a little bit. Yeah, and then and see it's going left. So so your thicks are on the left and your thins are on the right. So what you do with the tuning is we're gonna move in the direction of the hole because we got center shots set here. Everything's set perfectly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this thin and we're gonna swap them. And we'll probably do it top and bottom. And then so chase move. the tear. Chase the tear. You okay. go in the direction. Yeah, you move the cam and see that changes the wheel lean. So then that changes the tip of the cam okay. just slightly. And it's just a few thousands. But that few thousands will change that hole wow. dramatically. Yeah, form looks good. Soft touch, yeah, good. Yep, two of them identical. So let's go. Let's go do that. And it's not quite as rapid a change like Matthews has had yeah. the same system. They use the system. Yeah, I wouldn't speed. have. That's but, why you uh, go to a pro. I don't know how to do any of this. So watch here, he's going to change the whole spacer in the cam just to pull out. I mean, it's just tearing just a tiny bit, but to pull that out, it takes moving the spacer and moving the cam over actually, which it's just doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bows, thousands of bows. That's the knowledge that you get.
So now we've switched the spacers. We're gonna see, see what kind of results we get here. There we go. Ooh, wow. So you know, in dissecting this too, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move, we're gonna move the loop up a little bit because we got a good hole. Yeah. We're just tail low because see, the top fletch is not as long as the other two. So, so will people, so the first rip that we saw, the normal person, he's going to start to move the rest right and left, correct? Yeah. That, it, right? Yep. Yeah. And and I've, I've, I've watched people that like say that that's what you're supposed to do, but that is not what you're supposed to do. Right and left mm -hmm. is the cam. So the idea, like if you draw a bow, you, you know, instinctive, I, if I shoot, and I shoot traditional a little bit, you know, yeah. you want to be able to come in and, and have this portion of your hand as, you know, your body finds, you know, center. When you come in with a traditional bow and you release, you're pointing that bow directly and you're looking, you're, you're lining the arrow up. My, I, you know, for me, you know, when I come in, everybody's corner of their mouth lines up with their eyes. So when you come in and you drag in and you, you anchor and you release, all worlds are in alignment right there. This hand, your brain, your eye, and this hand are all in a line. You want that the same with this. So the idea with taking the rest and putting it in dead center and then manipulating your cams a few thousandths at a time to get a paper hole by, by, by shifting you know, the load on the deflection on these limbs, shifting the load slightly and tilting that cam, that's going to give you that perfect center. So when you draw your bow and you aim at an animal with a compound, you want to have the same as though you were shooting a recurve. I see. You know, so you're pointing that hand and everything, and everything's in alignment. You start moving that rest, oh my gosh, you move that rest a little tiny bit, and you're aiming over here. Let's say, you know, like on this hole here, we were ripping. So we would have had to move the rest inside, so now you're aiming to the left to, to hit the target. Well, you don't want that. You want to have perfect alignment. You want to be able to set your feet, point your hip, you know, whatever open stance, closed stance, whatever your stance is, you want to have everything to where when you draw and you point that, your sights are on the animal, everything's on the animal, you're not aiming off the animal. Hmm. And honestly, some, some bows with the kind of rips that you get, you would have to move the rest pretty substantially. So then you're not pointing the bow at the animal when you're shooting it or at the target or at anything else. Makes so sense. ideally you want to have that perfect center alignment, you know, with eye hand coordination. You want that. You want to be able to have the feet set, you know, and have everything in alignment. Perfect. So that's what the importance of it is. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to move this loop up because I like my rest position right where it's at. My rest position is perfect okay. right where I'm at. So we're just going to take this up and like, like all these bows too, you know, just, you know, of course, you know, these are threaded. So you just twist it and it's going to go up. Oh, it's interesting. Okay. Threads. You know, and that's actually a really good hole right there, but we're going to make it better. Okay. We're going to make it a little prettier. Um, where are we going here? I'll go to the left side now. Yeah, there's some paper down there, so. I'm going to chop this release. And then just, yeah, good soft fingers on the front, just soft touch. Oh, wow. Yeah, so here, so here's textbook. So, you know. This is where we started. These were our two holes. Of course, we were going left, so then we flipped the top hat. Then we shot it again. We're slightly tail low. So then we come in here, and we could shoot a bear shaft. It would do the same thing. You know, bear shaft or, or fletch shaft is going to do the same thing. But, you know, right there were textbooks. So what I always look at is all, all three holes are equal, you know. And, and so we've got perfect arrow flight with that. And, you know, there again, now we're, now we're ready to sight in. And what we're going to do now is we're going to step over and we're going to get um, we're going to get P pipe P pipe set correctly. That's a and so we've got and then we haven't shot this sight yet, so we're going to shoot this close ten yard target close and get everything you know dialed at this distance. Just aim at so the you don't blue one of the blue ones. ones. Sure, sure. One of the blue ones is good. And then I like to close the eyes, come into that anchor, find all your touch spots, and then just open just the right eye. Just a hair high. Hair high. We're going to drop that down and I'm going to have you shoot it and we're going to do it again. Yeah, yeah always have one straight up. It's going to give you your maximum amount of clearance going through that rest, which there's no contact on that rest. It's like 100% clearance. Yeah. So how was that P-pipe there? Uh, better. Better? Yeah, let's go up just a hair. 
Yeah, there's a perfect X. Better go film that X. That's, <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. My first one ever. Okay. So now he's going to just tie in that peep. So that's another good thing to do as far as take the peep, tie it in on both ends, and they'll tie all the way around it so nothing moves after, after it's all done. Got it. So, um, finishing up here, just shooting a couple arrows just to make sure my string doesn't turn, so I have to get my peep turned after that. Um, that's about it. Guys, I can't stress enough, Wayne takes bows from all over the world, don't you? Yeah, he has, there's a, last time I was in here there was bows, there was guys that flew in from New York. They flew here with their bow just to have Wayne and, and the bow rack work on it. So. It's a, pretty much a world-renowned shop, and I would stress, honestly, when it comes out of here, it is a shooting machine. And um, anyway, if you guys are looking for a pro shop, they take in, like I said, you could just ship it in the mail, and they'll do everything for you, and then they'll ship it right back to you all done, and, and uh, it's worth it, definitely and worth it. So don't screw it up yourself. Have a pro look at it. Thank you guys so much to the Borak, and uh, that is how you set up an RX-5.